In this video, we are going to learn how async works in Python. So let's directly jump to the code. So as you can see, it's a very simple function. So all we are doing is we are printing hello and then we are going to print another name that we are going to pass into this and we are going to introduce one second of time. Okay. So if I say, let's say, Upendra, okay. So what if we run it? Okay. So let's run this. So this is the output. As you can see that it printed hello. It took a second and then printed Upendra. Okay. So this is synchronous. So what does a synchronous code mean? So it means that every line of code, it will complete the execution and then the next line of code will be called. So what's the problem with this code? So in most of the cases, it works fine. It does the job it is required to do. Okay. So that's how we have been writing our code most of the times. But think of web scraping. Okay. So you are connecting to thousands of URLs. So there is some network delay which is involved. So one request, there is some network delay which is involved. Then you get the response back. Okay. So there is this delay. Now, if you wait for this request to complete and then you begin your next request, only after one request is completed, you are actually wasting resources. Your internet connection is much faster than handling just one connection at a time. Your CPU is much more powerful and your CPU is sitting just idle. It's doing nothing. The question is, how do we optimize our code so that we do not have to wait for that network delay? Now, towards the end of the video, I'm going to actually talk about how we can optimize this scenario where we are connecting to the websites. But before that, we need to understand some concepts. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to change this code and we are going to convert this into async. Now, before we can convert this into asynchronous code, we need to import one module and that module is called async IO. Okay. So let's import that and you don't have to install it separately. It is part of the standard Python package. So it will be there. All right. So this is done. Now, what we have to do is instead of directly defining the function, we just have to prefix async. That's all it takes for the step one, but we are not yet done. Okay. Now this time dot sleep is not going to work. So we are going to replace this time dot sleep with async IO dot sleep. All right. So it does the same thing, but it works in asynchronous code. There is one more thing that we need to do before we call this. We have to use the keyword await. Now this line of code, we are saying that wait until this finishes. So that's why we have this keyword await. By the way, you cannot use await keyword if the method is not async. Okay. So this is one thing that you need to remember. All right. So now, even now we are not done actually. So if I run this directly, we are ge getting this warning. So focus on the warning. What is the warning? Runtime warning. Coroutine main was never awaited. So let's forget about everything else. Just focus on this word. Coroutine. Okay. Let me go back few steps. Let me show you something. If I print that what is main. Okay. And let's run it. So now what will we get? Whatever is being returned by that function. And in this case, we are getting none because this is not returning anything, right? So now let's go back. So we have changed it back to the async code. And this time if we run it, we can see that this is a coroutine object. Okay. So now this is one important concept. If you use async, you're not working with function you're working with coroutines. This is the lesson number one. Now to call these coroutines, what you have to do is you have to send them to event loop. Okay. So what is event loop? So event loop is nothing but a specialized thread. Okay. So this is a non blocking thread. If you understand what is non blocking thread, it's fine. If you don't, it doesn't matter. So basically it's a different process, a different thread. Okay. I'm using the words interchangeably they are actually not but just for the understanding event loop is a specialized thread where you send all these requests okay so i'm using the word request for all the coroutines so all the coroutine that we want to execute 
they need to be sent to this event loop. Now you can send a lot of coroutines into the event loop, but they are not going to be executed immediately. They will be executed when the system can execute. And what happens to the result? Whenever the result is available, it is sent back to that function. So this is good in theory, but how does it work practically? So there are two ways, okay? I'll, let me show you the longer way first. So how do we write the longer way? See, first of all, what we are going to do is from the asyncq package, we are going to get this event loop. So very simple, right? So now we have access to the event loop. Now what we are going to do is we are going to call loop dot run until complete. And let's send this main function. Let's send the argument as well. So what we are going to say, Mr. Event loop, take this function. And once it is completed, close the loop. So now let's see if this runs. So let's run it. And there we go. We have hello and we have Upendra. Now sending these coroutines to the event loop is something that is so common that actually there is a shortcut. The shortcut is async io run and that's it. This is where you pass this. So this main coroutine along with this parameter. So these three lines and this line, so they are almost the same. Okay. So let's run this and we have our hello and we have our Upendra. Okay. Now, what I can do is I can make one more copy of this and this time we can say hello world. This time if I run, this will execute and then this will execute. So we will have hello, one second of wait, Upendra, then hello and then one second of wait and then world. Okay. So now you must be wondering that, okay, we are not executing these coroutines in parallel. So that is true. So bear with me we are going to make that change as well. But before I do that, I need to talk about task. So what are tasks? So tasks are nothing but a wrapper over all these coroutines. Okay, so task is a wrapper over coroutine. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to delete this. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to define one more function. Okay, and this one is also going to be async. And I'm just calling this runner. Because the only thing that it is going to do is it is going to run this. So what we will be doing is we will be writing some code here that will take care of creating some task and we will run that using async io dot run. So yes, this is not going anywhere. You still have to call this. Okay. Now in the runner, what I'm going to do is call async io dot create task. So our coroutine name is main. All right. So I'm giving one parameter which goes here. So this is going to result in task. So I'm just going to call it task one, make one more copy. And let's call this task two. Let's execute these tasks. So how do we execute? Await task one, await task two. Right? So, so far what we have done is simply we created this coroutine and we created a wrapper around it which is the task. Okay. And we are executing these two tasks. So let's run the code and tell me what is going to be the behavior. Start this task, but it will not wait and it will go and run the second task. Let me put a standard print here. Now this time, if we run this code, you will see something interesting. Now you will see that it started printing hello, then again it printed hello. Then it printed these two names and then it printed done. So why I did that to show you something important. Now note that this concept is very important. So when you create the two tasks and when you await for these two tasks, these tasks will be started immediately. Okay. So task one is started immediately. Task two is started immediately, but this coroutine will not be exited until all the tasks are completed. So only when task one and task two is completed, only then it will come to this line and only then this function will be exited. This was okay when we had to create only two tasks, right? But if we have to create hundreds of tasks. So for example, think about sending HTTP request around thousand times. 
So do I have to write await request one, await request two, await request three, await request four? No, right? So there is an alternate. You don't have to write like this. Instead, what you can do is you can call async dot gather. Okay. Now here async io dot gather. So async io, async io, depends how you want to say it. But anyway, so here you can use task one, task two and all that. Okay. So this is what we are going to do. And of course, whenever you are working with async, you already always have to use await. So let me show you what is the benefit. We can write a quick loop. Okay. Let's say that I have a couple of names here. So I have open, I have world. Okay, let's say I have code record, something like that. So what I can do is I can simply run a quick loop. So for name in names, okay, let's create one empty list here and task dot append. Now this is where I can call see. Do you understand what we are doing here? We are creating a list. Okay. We have this input. Okay. So now dynamically, if you're reading, let's say CSV file or some other source where you are getting some values dynamically, you can simply run a loop and you can create a lot of tasks and store them inside a collection. Now, how do you pass it to the gather? So this is where your Python is going to help you. If you write star task. Okay. So asterisk is going to unpack the list. Now this time, if we run this, hello, 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 three times, then all three parameters that we passed and then we have done, right? So that is the benefit of using gather. Now let's talk about something practical. So I have a list of links and what we are going to do is we are going to read these dynamically, okay? So let me walk you through the code because it's fairly straightforward. And then we will see how we can optimize this using async. Okay. So the first function is get links. It's very simple. It is simply reading the CSV file, running a loop and reading only the first column. So basically this function is only to read the links that I need to process. All right. Then let me collapse this for now in the main function. See what we are doing in the main function. We are using the request library and we are getting the session. Now, if you're connecting to the same website, then it is obviously better to use the same session. So it will make things much faster. So what we are doing here is we are creating a session and we are reusing that. And then we are running a loop over all those links. Okay. And we are simply calling the get response function and whatever is the result, which is returned, it is we are simply appending it and then printing it. And if we look at the get response method, it is simply taking the same session that was passed to it. I just want to make sure that I'm actually visiting the correct pages. So I'm using some regular expression to extract the title. Okay. I'm not using beautiful soup because that is not optimized for async. The beautiful soup will not work. So that's why I'm using simple regular expressions. Okay and simply returning whatever is the content of the title. So let me run this code and let's see how much time it takes. All right, so run this complete and this one took 23 seconds. So let's move on and let's see what are the changes that we need to do. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to replace request library with AIO HTTP. Now, if you have not installed it, you will have to install it. It is not part of Python package. Now, apart from AIO HTTP, we are going to work with async. So we have to import async IO as well. Okay. So we have these two imports. Now let's see where we were using request. So here we were using request. So instead of request, we are going to use AIO HTTP dot client session. Okay. So there is no session. There is client session. Okay, now this is the async version. So if this is the async version, then this will become async. All right. And this main method, this itself will become async. 
Now this time we are not going to call get response directly. So what we are going to do is uh, we are going to use async io dot create task. So what we can do, uh, we can move this here. All right. So instead of calling get response, we are going to create the task. Now this time it is not going to return the result. It is going to return the task and result. I'm going to move it out of the loop because we will not be looking for results one at a time. Okay. Now one more thing that we need to do is we need to create a collection which is going to hold all these tasks and append this task. So in this loop what we have created is a collection of tasks. But remember that when you want to create a task this should be a coroutine and this is not a coroutine for now. So let's make it a coroutine as well. So this is going to be async. Now this response.txt is actually asynchronous. So we need to put await. So if we are putting here await, then this will become async with, okay? So this is async def. So this one will become a coroutine. We have asynchronous with, uh, we have this await, okay? Rest of the code can stay as is. So let me remove this commented line. Less confusion, let's remove the print because the print is not going to be useful. We are going to run all these in one parallel run. Okay, let's come back here. So now what we have a task. Now once we have created the task, so what is the next step? So the next step is async io dot gather, right? And this is where we have to unpack all the tasks. There you go. So now we are gathering all the task and this will give us a collection of results. So, so when we called async io dot gather, we have to await it. Okay. So let's run this and very quickly we have the results and this one took only 1.05. So if you remember the before this optimization, it took 28 seconds and now it took hardly one second. So we are processing 264 links in around one second. So this is the power of async. And by the way, there was one more purpose of uh, teaching you this async. The purpose is going to be there are going to be more tutorial on this channel where you will need to know async. So if you are not clear about how async works, watch this video again. So that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great time. Dun 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 dun